to a well-designed business. My name is Luann Nigara, and I'm so glad you found this podcast. Together with my husband, Vince, and our partner, Bill, we have grown our company, Window Works, from the ground up. So I know and I understand the challenges you face in running your interior design business. I also know that your talent alone isn't enough to ensure your success. So on this podcast, we talk about strategies and practical steps to help you grow your business. But make no mistake about it. We have our share of fun here too, mixed in with those aha moments that I love so much. This isn't fluff. Nobody has time for that. Whether you are a new interior designer or a seasoned designer, I am here to help you create and to manage the kind of interior design firm that you dream of. It's straight talk and it's action. Are you ready? Let's get started. Hi, welcome to a well-designed business. Today's show is sponsored by J Poor Living, and I'm pleased to let you know that I am talking today with Kate Lester, the principal of Kate Lester Interiors, and we're here to talk about her new collaboration with J Poor Living. You probably already know that I'm a huge fan of J Poor Living. They operate with integrity commitment, and attention to detail in all areas of their business. Kate shares that same level of integrity and attention to detail in her design firm. Her style is all about creating spaces that weave classic lines, vintage finds, modern moments, and an infusion of at least one weird thing. Her commitment to this has led her to an exciting new partnership with J. Poor Living, the Harman Collection, a line of vintage-inspired rugs fusing the beauty of vintage rugs with modern technology. The result is a line of heirloom quality designs that are accessible, affordable, and appropriate for any family's lifestyle. And let me add, they are very beautiful. I recently saw Kate's collection at at High Point, and it's magnificent. Let me introduce you to Kate Lester. Hi, Kate. Thanks so much for joining me on the podcast today. Hi, Luann. How are you? I am great. And I have to tell you, I'm looking forward to learning about this new collection of yours with Jaipur Living. I mean, you don't know this about me, but I adore Jaipur. Kate. I have had a couple of interviews with them now, and I've had meetings with them, and I've met them in High Point, and I just have the most respect for this company. And I'm a tiny bit fangirling and a little jealous that you are working with them so closely. Right. Oh, they're amazing. And they're such a well-oiled machine too. I was just really, you know, obviously this has been something that's been in the works for a long time and everything, the whole process was just so smooth. I'm really lucky because this is our first really huge brand collaboration. And I hope like all my brand collaborations go this smoothly. <laughs> I feel like they're setting the bar really high. Oh my else. goodness. Right. So tell me a little bit first, I want to know about the collection, but you just, yeah. you just said your first brand collaboration, you have a nice size business on your hands. You're doing so many things right. And in this first collaboration for you, Kate, did you approach Jay Poor? Did they approach you? Did you know you wanted your first collection, your collaboration to be in, a, in the area, you know, in the rug area? Like, how did it happen? Yeah, I mean, it happened, I would say, just like everything else that happens in my company, which is like one day, you know, you wake up and you're like, oh, I guess I'm an interior designer. I guess I have stores. I guess I have a <laughs> brand collaboration. That sounds really easy. I mean, there's a lot of work that goes into it, but I always had known that, I wanted to take my business in that direction. I have a, a degree in business and marketing from USC. And so my, my other life before design was in corporate America. So, you know, my goal always has been to love my career, but also to make money while I sleep, right? That mm. should be a, a successful designer. That should always be our goals, right? So, you know, I don't want to go to people's houses and charge by the hour for the rest of my life. So I knew a brand collaboration was going to be the way to go, but you know, of course, just being a regular person who started this company in my guest room, um, I wasn't sure where to start. And so I was speaking at a conference um, in Orange County. So this woman who was sitting at my table at the conference was so fabulous. And it turned out to be Sasha from oh. Jay Poor. And <laughs> she's just incredible. She's like got an MBA. She's hilarious. She's stylish. She just really knows what's happening in the design world. And she's just in tune. And I loved her. And we started talking about rugs and, you know, she said, I love your aesthetic and 
how come you don't use our rugs more? And I said, how come you don't have more vintage rugs that aren't, you know, funky and print? like, I'm not f- a fan of like printed rugs really. Mm. Right. Mm -hmm. And so when people were printing vintage rugs, I just wasn't gravitating toward that. Um, man-made vintage inspired rugs were something that I don't feel anyone had nailed yet. Right. Mm. And so, you know, of course she laughed at me with, when I gave her my honest opinion of why I'm not (laughs) buying, you know, I'm buying (laughs) wovens from them, but I'm not buying anything with a pattern. And, um, And that we just started our conversation and my publicist got involved and their team got involved. And it was just one of those organic things of, I was like, why don't you let me show you how to make a reproduction vintage line that people will actually want to buy. And they were like, well, we think we have some ideas too. And it turned out that we just, we really had some really similar thoughts on Mm. where it, what needed to happen with the you know, the binding and the backing and there were little details that I think separate this collection, um, from other man-made printed reproductions. And so those were the things, you know, that when I would order them and they would get here, I'd be like, send it back. It's not right. And Jay Per just really already knew what was in my mind and just nailed that. So it was really great. That's awesome. And how long ago was that, that you met Sasha? It was over a year ago. Oh, actually, that's not that long ago, I especially know. when we no. think about COVID times. <laughs> I know. I know. Maybe it was a little longer, but yes. I mean, it's been in the works. We've been heavily in the works developing this for a, a, over a year. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it seems like toward the end, it just goes very fast and furious. But it's been, it's been a really wonderful process. Well, and I was just going to say, if it really is, I mean, not not that if it's, I'm not questioning you, I was just going to say, knowing that it is just over a year, that also yeah. goes right back to what you just said about them having their processes locked down. Because I've had a dozen conversations with people and designers who have had the uh, honor and opportunity to do licensed programs. And it's not uncommon for it to be two and three year process, right? And yeah. so um, that just speaks to your first statement about how process driven they are and how organized they are and all the things so that's awesome because like from an idea meeting Sasha at a conference to completion that's pretty record time (laughs) and you could I mean she probably could tell you exactly how long it was you shouldn't trust me when I talk about timeline (laughs) because like I don't even know like what day it is of the week most times I got a call from my daughter's school yesterday that I forgot to pick her up so I feel like (laughs) she'll probably trust Sasha more than me but um, but they really, you know, the, I would say where we've been really interacting and really diving into patterns and colors and, you know, narrowing down the, the collection itself and talking about lead times and launch dates. And, you know, do we want to add in a, a textural element to the collection or do we want to keep it just these machine made pieces? Um, you know, the, it all moved very quickly and they, yeah, even the photo shoots and the lookbook and the marketing materials they were the whole experience was just so organized and and they really do have it together that's awesome i love that i love when i already know good things about a company and i continue to learn more good things about them you know what i mean it's like totally. your heroes that you yeah. look up to it's like i don't want to know anything bad <laughs> exactly Only tell me again. i will you know and i'm just blatantly honest so you know i i do think i we are a well-oiled machine at our office and we are efficient and we are you know organized. And so I, you always hope that the people you're going to be working with are the same way. Mm -hmm. And so it's just a pleasure when that does happen. So nice. So now you've mentioned a couple of times, you've said this sentence, the collection is man-made reproduction vintage. Talk to me about what that means as if I'm a person who doesn't really understand rugs, which is who I am. (laughs) Like give it to me. Okay. So (laughs) a true, you know, I am a lover of a true vintage, you know, true Turkish or Moroccan vintage rug, which is literally handmade, right? So someone is sitting, weaving a rug um, in Turkey or in Morocco, and it's all made by hand. There's no machines involved. There's no technology involved. It's true. You know, everything's being, the, the yarns are being dyed, the wool is being dyed, you know, whatever material it's being made out of is, is all happening with manpower, right? Mm. And so- the evolution of that, just like everything else in, in our industry is, you know, technology was introduced, right? So how can we 
you know, use technology to reproduce these patterns and colors and aesthetic that people are, are driven to at a lower price point, at a more readily available lead time, right? Because that's mm. the idea, more and more, less money, less time, less, you know, more accessibility. And so what we saw happening in our industry was that people were, um, th what they were doing was they were actually taking the, you know, people were interested in these vintage pieces and then they were, they were just too expensive or they're too hard to get, right? Not everybody has a guy in Turkey that they get their vintage drugs from, right? Mm -hmm. So a lot of these rug companies were saying, can we reproduce this in a fashion where people will feel like it's the same, but it's not the same. And it's actually made by a machine where the patterns and color, the, you know, it may be dyed or, or um, but the, the color itself and the pattern are printed onto the, the materials. Mm. So it's a really interesting concept. And as a designer with a true love for vintage, um, you know, it's a hard one to, to you know, because I can always, I always would say, but it's not the same. And it's true, mm. it's not the same. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I think as you really tailor that look and you get better technology and you spend more time and energy talking about what details are important, you start to see that it doesn't have to be the same. It can be different, but it can still be interesting, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, if somebody doesn't want a one-of-a-kind look and they don't really care if it's handmade, you know, then that's great. If they don't, you know, if they're not concerned if, that this is the only rug of this kind in the whole world in their home, mm. um, then the new collection is right for them because it's the price point is drastically more accessible to the regular person, which I love. Mm -hmm. um, and you're still getting that curated, collected, sort of bohemian, um, you know, elegant feel in your space. It's just not a one of a kind piece. And that's okay. Right, right. And so am I hearing you uh, correctly that, Obviously, your firm ha is going to deal with a lot more of the clients that are A, interested, and B, can afford the one-of-a-kind pieces. However, not only in your own business, you know, you realize that there are times and places that you wanted the look and the feel, totally. but maybe not the price point or the long deliveries or whatever it was. And before doing this collaboration with Jay Poor Living, it was diff more difficult to find something that met yeah. your aesthetic and your level of quality for this type of rug in a, in a project for you. Like, yes, I think all of the above, right? I think whenever you're, whenever you're developing a new product, you want to find a gap in the market, right? Mm -hmm. What's missing. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you, you know, when you're working with vin true vintage rugs, a, they're never an exact size. Right. Cause someone's right. like hand making them. They're never totally straight. They're never an exact size. And so people would come to us all the time in the stores and say, I really love that, but I need it in a runner. And I'd be like, mm. well, I can't help you. Cause someone made this 80 years ago in <laughs> Turkey. And <laughs> so, you know, and, and we'd say, well, this is a true vintage and people would be like, I don't really care. Can you get it in a runner? And I just thought <laughs> to myself, like, how funny, like people are less you know, the average consumer, I think, is less knowledgeable about that process, right? Mm -hmm. And maybe they're a little bit less discerning about if it's hand knotted or machine made, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. So we saw that there was a need for that. And there was a need for people who are wanting these different sizes and shapes and things. And it gave us, it gave, you know, me the thought that if we could nail this vintage reproduction look in a way that I felt was true to our brand, then I would be a hundred percent behind making it more accessible for the rate. And by the way, this isn't just a cost thing, right? This is about people who have, you know, kids and pets, like kids and pets are gross, right? So <laughs> maybe people have the money, but they just don't want to invest in it. Mm. They, or maybe they get bored easily and they want to have a new rug every couple of years. Well, then this is a great way to introduce color and pattern, you know, without, that value judgment that you have to make when you're spending ten or twenty thousand dollars on a on an oversized vintage rug. Hmm. Understood. Understood. And so, in the process of working with Jaipur in creating this collection, I know you said that there were a lot of times that you were both on the same page with like this, don't like that. But were there times when you had to just say, "Hey, if we're going to do this, and my name's going to go on it, I need." we need to have certain things that are bare minimums or we have to up level in this place. And, you know, what was that process yeah. like? Right. Because you, your yeah, name I mean, is on I it. Can, yeah. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. And you know, my company name is my name. So Mm -hmm. it's like, you just can't escape it. Right. So I think, you know, I didn't really want to pull that card because I don't think that that's the best way to get things done. Right. Mm -hmm. To, to, to sort of say, you know, it's my name and this is how it should be. So I think there were, there were things that I, that I, you know, relayed to them that were extremely important to me. And that was the, you know, that way that the rugs were bound, how the Mm -hmm. edge details were, because it's, I can tell you that after ordering so many reproductions during this process of doing my research, I found that that was always the dead giveaway to me at that. They felt a little bit, I don't say cheap, but it felt, you know, not as elegant as a true rug. Right. So I said, we've got to figure out a way to bind them and do an edging detail that still feels, you know, you're not going to get the fringe like you are on a vintage rug maybe, but what can we do? How can we stitch it? You know, what can we produce that isn't just this shiny sort of bound thread Mm -hmm. on the edges that is a dead giveaway that this thing is machine made. Right. Mm -hmm. And so we did have a lot of conversations about that and it, and you know, what it's backed with and, um, the pile, right? Like how, how plush does it feel? Is it tighter, like a true vintage rug or is it overly plush, which is another giveaway that it's not really a nod to a true, Mm. you know, a true vintage carpet, um, true vintage carpets aren't always all that soft. right? Right. So, you know, the threads, the wool is cut and it's, and it's dyed and it's been, you know, hung dry in the sun. And so it's not like a beautiful wall to wall carpet that your feet just sink into all the time. And so I think you're walking that fine line of how do we create this? So it is soft enough that people will want their kids and pets to be sitting on it, but also that it still is true to our original vision of staying as close to that um, true vintage as we can. And so all those things, you know, pile height, binding, backing, were all taken into consideration. Also the color palette, like, you know, what is driving, you know, what are our most popular vintage color palettes? And I would love to keep that true to our collection as well. Right. Mm. Um, I don't use a lot of bright pink, so there isn't a lot of bright pink in the collection. So I think, you know, just making sure that that it felt organic and true to my aesthetic so that people realize that I do care about it and I did help develop it and we did really work together. I didn't just slap my name on something so I could make money while I sleep, you know? Right, Um, right. So that was really, it's important to me that this feels authentic because everything we do is authentic and I want to make sure that if we are going to attach our name to something that it feels, you know, just really well thought out and really true to, to what we believe in. And I love, um, you know, it's funny because as you explain the details of the rug and the the, the, the asks, right? I, and I didn't think for one second that you yeah. were a diva marching in there, your clackety clack heels saying it has to look like this, darling. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, right. you know, totally. I, right, right. But I, I mean, yeah. what I, what's interesting is, and I said, explain it to me like somebody who doesn't know the difference of a, one rug or another. Yeah. And I love that because the truth of the matter is, is it sounds like to me that between your um, aesthetic and your knowledge of actual vintage rugs, and of course, you know, Jay Poor does handmade rugs too. So it's not like, oh, they're just a machine made company. You know, their, their experience. I I do buy their handmade rugs. Their handmade rugs are incredible. So they know what I'm talking about. Yeah, exactly. And so I love that you identified the places that a machine made rug could be elevated and could have more Mm -hmm. of the qualities that you're looking for um, that, that mimic the actual vintage rug. So it's, it's nice. I mean, and when you said, you know, the pile, I can picture the differences, right? It's a big cushy pile is not something that we're going to find in an 80 year old rug. So um, it's, it's, it's great. I love, I love the thought process that goes into something. And so the collection, but we left out, you know, we left out the bad smells like of oh. true vintage rugs. They always smell like they've been in someone's basement. So your reproductions, we just went ahead and got rid of that for you. Those are just going to smell fresh. Well, yes, that's good. <laughs> that's interesting, right? Is that something you have to warn your clients about? Like, do you have to hang them outside for a couple of days until you bring them in? What we do, you do? We do clean all the rugs before they hit the floor, okay. uh, the showroom floor, and before they hit our clients' floors. But, you know, sometimes 
if something has been rolled up um, for a really long time, you have it cleaned. You pr- Sometimes we have to clean it again once sure. it's down. You know, our clients will say, there's a weird smell coming from the office. And I'm like, oh, it's probably the rug. It's like 85 years old. So I don't know. Maybe there was a body in there at one oh point. I'm not goodness. sure. Right, but right. we'll get it cleaned again. Yeah. When you think yeah. about all the places that rug has been in its 80 plus years, right? <laughs> I love it. All the history, all the vibes. It's, it's wonderful. Absolutely. It absolutely is cool to think about it. And so the, the collection, tell us about the name of the collection and where did that come from? Is that a you thing? Is that a collaborative thing? Is that a them thing? Yeah. Where did that come yeah. from? Tell us. So Harmon is a me thing. Um, I was, they threw out a couple of names for the collection and I just didn't feel like they were the right fit. It was really important to me that the name of the collection was like, super meaningful and it wasn't something that we just you know picked out of a hat right Mm -hmm. and harman is actually the turkish word for blend and i loved the idea of that because a a turkish rug a turkish true turkish vintage is one of my favorite vintage rugs Mm. and so i love that we can give a nod to that right and then also you know i love the idea of saying that this is about blending. This is about blending vintage pieces with machine made pieces in your home. It's about blending colors. It's about blending textures. It's about blending lifestyles and families and spaces. And so I think when I found that, I knew right away that it was, it was perfect. Mm. And I think to me, it was saying, you know, that it was blending our relationship of, of myself and Jay Per. It was just all of these mm. these great things coming together and blending technology and my love for vintage and and accessibility. And so I just knew it was right right away and I submitted it to them with my little spiel of why I thought it was right. And Sasha was like, All right, we got it. This is great. Let's go. <laughs> I love it. So I don't know if we were on a time crunch or they really liked it as well, but it's <laughs> it is the name. And here we go. <laughs> well, Kate, I mean, really, when you describe it that way, it ha- how could it almost be named anything else? It does make such right. perfect sense, right? You really are okay. blending all the elements of you, what you brought to the program, what your your design aesthetic is, what your history and design is, you know, their right. contribution to it. I, it is. It's it's a great, great name. And we love, you know, it's, it's one of the greatest things in marketing is the story that the goes story. along right right because yes. people are served new products every day and people want to know why and what makes it different and why it's special and you know just like you said what why is this you know closer to to a vintage a true vintage than any other reproduction on the market and and I want to be able to answer those questions and I think um you know I think it's I think that it it did it just came out perfectly and and I'm really pleased with with the name I love it. And now the collection consists of Harmon, which is the vintage collection mm-hmm. with the patterns, Correct. and then Harmon Natural, which are like solid textures. Tell us a little bit about the two different yeah, collections. Yeah, woven. Sure, sure. So the, the Harmon collection, the vintage collection, which is vintage reproductions that are man-made, that's 12 patterns. Um, just really a great span of colors and tech, uh, colors and patterns. You know, there's a few geometrics, a few true vintage, more Persian influenced, more Turkish influenced, um, and, and a whole like myriad of a color palette, right? You've got neutrals, you've got darks and lights and, um, blues and which I love. And so those 12 pieces are incredible. Um, and then, you know, once we had nailed that down, Sasha came back to me and said, you know, I I feel like when I look at your work, you know, there's a lot of influence of natural textures too. Like, do we want to pair in a few of these woven pieces um, that we have so that people can use them in a complementary fashion with the rugs or with another vintage rug they might have as, uh, you know, having things layered. And I was like, oh my God, I love this idea. This is why you're great. So and why she's brilliant, so we looked right? At a ton of, she is. And so we looked at a ton of these you know, woven textures and colors and, and styles. And the biggest complaint we always get from our clientele about woven rug, you know, jute, sisal, anything like that is it's itchy, right? It's mm. hard to clean. What if my dog pees on it, you know? And so these all are, are blended with natural fibers. So they've got this warmth and they've got this softness to them that is incredible. And the 
is a little bit lower. So they're not as thick as like a sisal or jute. And so you can actually open your bedroom door over it, you know, unlike some of those thicker rugs. Mm. And those are all things that I cared about, right? Like I want to like these rugs too. So I want to use these. I want to, you know, I want other designers to know or, or, you know, right. The regular consumer to know that I've like already tested this out and it's incredible. Mm. So same, same thing as the vintage pieces. So these are five additional pieces that are, you know, range in warmth and, and other woven colors. There's some whites that run through them. Some have a little gray running through them. Some are just a true natural and they're meant to be complementary to the rest of the collection. And I think it's a great idea. Love it. I love it. And so tell me about the process of designing the patterns for the rug, Kate. How did, you know, did you just like, you know, grab a glass of Chardonnay and hole up in your studio for three oh days or was that collaborative oh also? No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I definitely, and I, you know, I'm way past Chardonnay, honey. I'm like a straight tequila girl. So I'll just tell you, like, we can't be doing any pattern design after a bunch of tequila. So, um, no, these patterns are actually inspired by vintage rugs from our our collection. I should say, like my collection, my travels, my love for vintage. You know, rugs that I may have used, or you know, the one that got away that I took a picture of, and I was like, oh, I love this rug. Mm. And so it wasn't like I sat down and drew these patterns on AutoCAD because I just don't think that a I'm not creative, and b I'm that good at AutoCAD, and then c <laughs> that wouldn't be true to what we are trying to achieve, right? Mm. These should be a tribute to the rugs that have, you know, stolen my heart over the years um, that we were able to use in our clients' homes and projects in my own home. And then also in, you know, ones that just were too expensive for me to buy that I keep in a Dropbox folder that I'm like, you know, just should have sold my kidney on the internet for that one. But, <laughs> um, you know, so, so really it was, Hey, look at this. Um, this is so great. And I love the scale of this and I love the pattern of this. And, you know, I love this except for the, the color, the one color running through it. And so we really just went back and forth and, and talked about things like that. And it's not too hard when you have those original pieces for reference, you know, and I, I and it's not like we copy them piece by piece, but we were inspired by those pieces right. and it really led us in the direction of where, where we ended up here changing certain things and, and, I think it, we really made it our own, but we are so true to saying we were inspired by original pieces and, mm. and we cannot forget about the original pieces because that's where this all started. Hmm. And it's another nod to the blending, the blending of the real rug, exactly. you know, that was, was born somewhere and crafted and hand, hand woven somewhere yeah. and now blending it into the new world and, you know, the new sensibilities and being able to have kids and dogs and all the things on it. Right. <laughs> Totally. I mean, we want people to live in their homes, something that's, it's so important to me that, you know, we all grew up, I mean, a lot of us probably grew up with spaces in our homes that you couldn't use. And mm. I just think that is such a thing of the past. And if it means that we need to get more creative and we need to move forward with technology and embrace that so that people can enjoy their spaces in a way they feel comfortable, um, then I'm here for it, right? Like, let's evolve. Let's, let's do it. Let's not say, well, then I guess you can't have a vintage rug. I guess you don't get pattern and color because you have a, a dog or a kid. Um, you know, and so I think it's, it's about, about saying, okay, let's, let's think outside the box and let, you know, this kind of design aesthetic be accessible to everyone. Mm, I love it. So good. So good. Yeah. 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 And I mean, and also like selling, as a designer, selling a true vintage rug to your client is is hard, right? It's like next to impossible. It's a huge investment. You could buy like a Kia, you know, instead of buying a vintage rug, right? So I think for a lot of designers, this will be so great for them to, to use when they're designing spaces and they want that aesthetic. And it's not a hard sell to their client, you know? Mm. So I, I just think it's a win-win. Mm. Because that is another thing, right? Is is having the educated consumer that also has the appreciation for the 80-year rug. And if that's not there, and it's like, that's interesting, but I'm not emotionally attached to it, then right. they're just picking for, for the aesthetic of it. And that's not enough to make that investment in the actual real thing is what you're describing. Am I right? Correct. Yep. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. So good. And so in your own personal interior design, obviously I'm hearing it throughout. This is a personal love of yours. And so are you looking forward to Kate? I mean, as we're talking, the line is launching in just a few days. And so by the time our friends are listening to this, it will be out and on your website and on the Jaipur website. But are you looking yes. forward to using these rugs in your own projects and, and with your own clients? Yes, absolutely. Because I have no qualms about the fact that like kids spaces, like children do not deserve true vintage rugs in (laughs) their spaces where they will be like spilling their juice box on them. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know what I always say, like my daughter doesn't deserve a Turkish rug. She has a reproduction. And so I think in these spaces that we want to elevate, like imagine a kid's playroom that didn't have this like, you know, puzzle piece rug. It has like an elegant, elevated, you know, reproduction vintage rug. And you're like, wow, your kids are sophisticated and cool. And they're like, guess what? This was so inexpensive and it's amazing. And so I cannot wait to show these rugs to my client because to my clients, especially in the secondary bedrooms and vacation houses and, you know, in spaces where there isn't a value, you know, there isn't a value in investing in those traditional and original pieces. I think I'm absolutely open to it in a kitchen, you know, in a kitchen for a runner or a hallway where you need a really long runner or you need two runners, or what if you want to do a staircase and you want six of the same? Now you can do that. I can buy six runners and you can have them installed on a staircase. My mind is like, it's just overflowing (laughs) with ideas of how we can make the, this collection incredible, um, in our own clients' spaces. Mm -hmm. And, and is the, once the collection is launched, because we are talking pre-launch, um, once it's launched, is it the type of thing, Kate, where they're available and ready and I click a designer out there clicks and places in order, or do they, is there still a lead? Like, do they go into production once we order? They're in stock. Can you believe this? So (laughs) this was another huge thing because I said, I really don't want to launch a rug line where we have to, you know, we launch it and people are so excited and then they order it and it'll be like, that'll be 18 weeks, right? (laughs) Because it's so unrealistic. And with true vintage, you do get it right away, right? You buy it out of the back of someone's van or you buy it, you know, from your guy in Turkey um, and he ships it to you via DHL or whatever. So I wanted it to be available. And I, I thought, you know, Sasha and I both agreed that that having an allotment of stock for each of the each of the um, SKUs was really important in various sizes, so that people could really embrace the collection right away. And after this long pandemic with you know supply chain shortages, it's like my gift to my fellow designers. Like, <laughs> yes, you can buy it, and yes, you can enjoy it, and yes, you can sell it to your client right away. Oh my goodness, you're funny. So, so I love that. I love that they are in stock. You're right. It's sort of like the big you know letdown if it's like they're great, but you can't have them, right? Yeah. <laughs> right. It's, and and yeah, something launches and you go on and they're like add to wait list and you're like forget it. I don't I want know. it anymore. I know. <laughs> so it's so funny. Yes. Right. So, and to the point, and I don't know the answer to this is, can I customize it if I go and there's an eight by 10, but I need a 12 by 15, or is it, these are the sizes, these are the colors, these are the, you know, the things. So it's not customizable because you don't need to customize it. These are awesome patterns and colors and you need to just trust me because that's what I would (laughs) tell my clients. Okay. I'm the expert and I've picked these colors and patterns for you and your clients. I'm helping you out, right? So build a room around this rug. Um, and there are a ton of sizes, though. You know, every every um, almost all of the SKUs come in a, a runner, a five by eight, um, an eight, you know, eight by ten. Um, they're they're really great. Ten by fourteen. There's really great size range. Mm. So I think you'll be able to really work with the the palette of sizes. Yeah, I love it. I love it. I, I already figured it out for you. Stop thinking. That's basically what right? you're saying. <laughs> yeah. Just trust me, like save yourself the hours and just use one of the rugs because I already spent all the hours on it. I mean, like, again, again, it's my gift to my fellow designers. Like we, we, we took the guesswork out of this for you. I promise it's like someone who gets you is designing this rug for you. So now you can use it and you can focus on everything else. Oh my goodness. You're fun. You're fun. All right. So let's, let's switch a little bit to talk about Kate Lester interiors. Okay. Okay. So my favorite subject. My <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I, we talked a little, so you've been in the, in the industry 15 years, you've had your own firm 11 years. And, you know, I love this, you know, 
business marketing background. It's so evident in the way that even just the answers that you're giving me, I can I can hear it, Kate, that you run the business from a standpoint of, you know, productivity, of profitability and all those things. Talk, just give us a tiny bit on your journey in founding your interior design firm and where you are now. Sure, sure. So I was working in corporate America after college. I had a really lucrative job. Um, I was just zipping around town in my little BMW. I was like, you know, my parents were so proud of me. And <laughs> one day I just realized like I hated my career and I hated that the women at the firm I worked for had to, you know, say, Oh, can, can I take, you know, 15 minutes for a break or can I, you know, and the, you know, there was a lot of still in that corporate world, there was still a lot of you know, male dominated vibes. And I just was like, I just don't think this is right for me. And then I'm sitting in my office and I'm like, Ooh, the walls would be really pretty if they were like a taupe color in here. And I realized that like, I had this passion for design and I don't want to say I was one of those people that like always rearrange my room. Cause I kind of hate when people say that, but you know, I, I realized my mom was very creative and I had always been creative. And so I remember calling my grandparents because they were like my biggest cheerleaders um, when I was in business school and telling them like, guess what, you guys, I'm going to quit my job. I'm going to start bartending and I'm going to go to school for interior design because I'm totally going to change my career. (laughs) I thought my grandfather was going to have like a heart attack. Um, And thank God that my mom is like a little bit of a hippie because she was like, yeah, whatever, like makes your vibes good and is going to make you, you know, love your life. And Um, and then I was like, can I have some money? And she was like, no. So, um, so I did, I went back to school and I bartended and, um, because my parents were like, look, we paid for one college journey for you. Like that's enough per lifetime. If you want to change your mind 50 times, great, but it's going to cost you on your own dime. So I went back to school and I went to interior design school, which I could do a whole nother podcast about how I feel like that is not teaching anybody the right things that are relevant in the interior design world, except maybe AutoCAD. Um, and so I dropped out of interior design school once I knew the things that I thought were pertinent to getting a job. And because in the business world, getting an internship, getting a job, that's how you learn, right? Right. right. And so as soon as I could, as soon as anyone would hire me, um, at first I got a job at Ethan Allen where I hawked furniture and I was the free designer, which was absolutely terrible. It was like the worst year of my life. And then I finally worked for a designer in West Hollywood who was incredible. And I, I stayed there for five years and I really worked my way up and I, I really, you know, owe him so much because he taught me so many things of, you know, how I, I, I saw how I want to run my company, maybe how I want to run my company different, differently when I went on my own. I learned the ropes. Um, I watched, you know, wonderful things happen. I watched mistakes happen. And I think then, you know, at that point I knew I was ready. Um, I guess you're never really ready, but I was ready enough <laughs> <laughs> to go out on my own and, my husband said to me, all right, like, you know, here we go. And so we opened, um, or I opened Kate Lester and tears with the fabulous support of my husband. who's a very patient man, Mm. um, in my guest room. And I had $500 and I was like, okay, let's do this. I had a laptop and a printer. And, um, I just remember getting a call from a friend of mine that I bartended with that turned out he was a partner in a restaurant. And he said, Hey, I just bought this beach house. And somebody told me like, you're starting your own company. Can you come and furnish it? Hmm. And I was like, Oh my God, the universe is just telling me I made the right decision. And so from that day forward, you know, you know, the, the work came in and I will not say it just came in. Like the phone didn't just ring. I hustled. I went, I did networking. I did marketing. I did dinners and lunches and coffees and, you know, I did all the things that you need to do. Um, all the schmoozing, but the work came steadily and, you know, it got better and better as I got more knowledgeable and, and here we are, uh, so many years later. Well, you know what? I love it. I love the story because first of all, we've had the same sentence to our kids. No, we paid for one. (laughs) You could do the next. (laughs) And, and you know what? I, I mean, look, your business degree is to your, what you found out when you were in design school probably serves you infinitely better than if you had the four year degree in design. Oh my God. Infinitely better. (laughs) Like so many designers ask me on Instagram, like, how much should I charge? What should I charge? How do you write a contract? And I'm like, oh my God, the fact that people are graduating from design school and this isn't one of the, I mean, a business school, they teach you all those things, mm-hmm. you know? And so I think my business degree has been invaluable because as much as, you know, I have admired so many designers who I, I have seen sort of like fizzle out because they didn't treat this as a business. Mm-hmm. And the truth is, is that, 
you know, what we do is creative and we do get to be a little weird and a little, you know, like, oh my God, but trust me, this is gonna be amazing. Um, but at the end of the day, this is our livelihood. This is our company. This is a business. And just like any other professional service, you know, we do need to turn a profit. Um, profitability is so important. And a lot of designers think that maybe that's a bad word, right? Because it would like stifle your creative process. But I think you have to learn how to have those two worlds coincide and say, this is, this is a wonderful design and it's also going to be profitable for me. 100%. Well, you are preaching to the choir here on this show. <laughs> Every single interior designer shows up, knows that they are looking to create a profitable business. <laughs> that is the goal. Right? Yeah, because yeah. look, I, I fully believe that each of you that are called to be interior designers have been called for a reason for the rest of us to enjoy what you create when you sit in an office and you're sure. thinking that should be taupe you know that's a thing that all the rest of us are just sitting in the office but when you make that office taupe totally. we enjoy it better you know what i'm saying right. and right. so right. we need you to survive we need you to do your thing and to bring your gifts into the world so that uh we can enjoy it but you have to be profitable in doing it right you do. And you have to not be sorry about it, you know? And I think a lot of times, you know, people complain, you know, your clients will complain about the price or they'll complain about the cost or they'll complain about, and, you know, I think a lot of times I tell my clients, you know, whatever it was that brought you to me, whether it was Instagram or the website or any of those things, um, you know, that's what that cost. So if you would like me to reproduce that for you, it's not emotional. This is just what it costs, right? And so I think a lot of times because what we do is personal, what we do is creative, people think there's no, there's like negotiations. Like I don't get any dumber if I go to your house and I charge you less, right? So like <laughs> the fees aren't negotiable, the budgets, you know, the budgets while flexible, really it, it costs what it costs to do a certain amount of square feet. And so I think, you know, I think having that processes, having those processes and being kind of strict about our processes and about the way that we work, I think your clients actually respect you. And they say, wow, you are a business person and you are going to be a good steward of my money because you, it seems like you know what you're doing because you're not budging when I'm, when I'm asking for all these things. And, you know, I, I love your work and okay, fine, let's just do this. Right. So I think that, you know, staying firm and staying true to who you are and how you charge and, and, being honest about that and not giving people discounts and discrepancies and all these things because they're, you know, whining or upset or whatever. We're a luxury service. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Not, you know what I mean? Yes. We're not curing cancer. Okay. Right. So, right. so I'm always like, look, you, this is not something you need, something <laughs> that you're going to enjoy, but you know, you can living spaces, enjoy it tonight if you need to. Right. So, um, I think that, you know, that's really important to me is that, is that, 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 that I, that I can be a voice for other designers and say, stay, stay strong, stay true to who you are and, and, and your, your structure and your processes. And, and, you know, it's, it works. Well, and I love you just said, stay strong, stay true to your structure and your process, because by the way, I know that you're going to agree with me. The number one thing is to have a structure and a process, right? Oh my it's God. Yeah. If you don't have one of those, you should probably get one really quick. And like the amount I, whenever I speak at these conferences or panels and the amount of people that come to me and say like, should I get a contract? And I'm like, Oh my God, <laughs> please tell me you have insurance. Like, you know, I think, yes, I think you have to have your structures and your processes. You know, if you love doing kitchens and you know, you only want to do a kitchen, then make that part of your process, make that, put that on your website. If you like doing just one or two rooms at a time, you don't have the bandwidth for a whole house, you know, then say that and, um, tell people what kind of work you want to do. Right. And then those people will come put that out there. And so I think you find out what you're good at and, and then you can, you can stay true to that and you can focus on that. Um, you know, as you get larger and you grow and, and, but yes, processes and systems, like you're still a company. It's like, you, we don't, I, I don't play with fabrics all day. Mm -hmm. I couldn't tell you the last time I played with fabrics, right? <laughs> Most of the time I'm at my computer. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's still a business and we don't go shopping and have lunch with our clients ever, by the way. Mm -hmm. So it's not, what we're doing is not, I think what people sometimes think it is when you're running a big firm, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And Kate, do you, are you also a person who has come by the strong convictions from having made the mistakes along the years of not standing in these convictions? 
hundred percent. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And that's how we learn, I, right? It's totally how we learn. I was, you know, I wasn't, I didn't come out of, I came out of the womb, like really bossy and annoying, but I didn't come out of the womb knowing all of these things. Right. But I do know that like fool me once yeah. and that's not going to happen again. So every time we make a mistake, we amend our contract and we amend our processes and our structure. And, and I, you know, when we raised our fees because we wanted a more, a more appropriate clientele than what we thought we could bring to the table for like three months, no one called us. And I was like, Oh my God, we're never going to, Oh my God, this is like a horrible idea. But then when they did call and it, they said, no problem, it's like, if you make it, they will come. And so you have to teach people how to treat you. And if you tell them, I don't work on the weekends because that's my time to enjoy with my family, just like I'm sure you're enjoying your time with your family, we can totally talk about that on Monday. Mm -hmm. Then people will not call you on the weekends. So I think you just have to remember that, you know, you're a talented individual. You, you have a gift that a lot of other people don't have. So honor that gift and teach people how to treat you and respect that gift. I love it. I love it. You know, it's funny. You remind me a hundred years ago, my daughter, who's now in her thirties, she was, you know, little before under 10. And yeah. I remember getting into a little bit of a tiff with a client that wanted to see me on a Saturday. And I, you know, nicely three times, you know, no, we, you know, I don't have appointments available Where's Saturday. You? Here's I do this Tuesday and Thursday. No, I really need Saturday. Well, I'm not available Saturday. Well, I mean, can you do the following Saturday? No, actually I don't work on Saturdays. <laughs> never. And, you know, and I never forget the line. She says to me, well, I don't understand the weekend is when I get all the things done in my house and, and, you know, I get caught up on all this stuff and I'm like, I do understand. Cause that's also what I do on yep. the weekends. I'm like, yep. you know, whatever. <laughs> yep. And I think people, it, I think that's always a red flag too. You know, when someone calls or submits through our website and they said, they say, you know, I'd love for you to come by the house tomorrow. <laughs> And you're like, excuse me? Like, do you say that to you, like your surgeon? It's like, I mean, you're about to invest a bunch of money here. So like maybe respect the schedule and see when we both could work on that. So I think like we talk about this, we have a little red flag framed in our office and it's because those little red flags, sometimes what you know, when the client isn't the right fit for you or your processes, right? Um, and you have to stay true to that and say, you know, I don't, I don't know that we're going to be the right fit for each other because it sounds like weekends are the best time for you. And those are never going to be convenient for me. <laughs> right. So this whole process is going to be a complete nightmare. Right? right. Right. So I think, you know, if you say those things up front, you, I always say when we do our calls, our initial calls with our clients, you know, this is an interview for both of us to mm. make sure that we like each other because we're going to be working together for like three years. So we want to work with people that we like that are kind and that are respectful. And we want to be kind and respectful and, this is a journey that we're on together. So we really have to like each other and we have to know that each other has, you know, our best interests at heart. And so I think that staying true to your, you know, what you know when you talk to people, is this person going to fit in our processes and our structure? And mm -hmm. are they okay with that? You know, you always yes. know. And yeah. so it's you okay to walk away know. and, you know, you never, totally. Yeah. You do always know, I, I, what I have found in my own experience in business over the, the many years and in all the conversations on the podcast, Kate, is that it there's a, a growing into listening to what you know, right? It, like you get yes. burned once, you get burned a Trusting second time, really and then you start to say, no, never again. And then you do it another time. And then you're like, no, really never again. And, totally. and, and I know that you've been through that as well, because so often a, an, a, a, a lesser seasoned interior designer, maybe in that first three, five, eight, maybe they're in business 15 and they're still not listening to right. their inner voice. Sometimes when they hear the confidence of somebody like yourself, they do mistake that it was easy for you. Right. Totally. We see you where you are now. And yep. so we need voices like yours so that we know that the, the it's on the other side, that once you reach the confidence, then the projects go the way they should. And when you say no yes. three times, it's OK, because the fourth one is going to be the big project that you're so happy about that you've got the time for. Right. right? And you also want to leave room. Right. So, you know, I always think to myself, I would hate to have to turn away my dream client who will be calling. Mm. Right. Because I've got this person who doesn't respect my boundaries taking that spot. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes you have to trust that they will come, right? And say, you know, and when you first start out, you probably are going to have to deal with people that you don't love. And that's okay. But, you know, knowing that you have an end goal in mind 
that, you know, I want to love my job. I, I don't, I didn't leave a job and a career I hated to come and make another job career that I hate. Mm. Right. So I want to work with people that I like. I want to do designs that inspire me and that I'm proud of. And so I think, you know, treating, the other thing is I, I hear a lot from, you know, and I, I struggled with this too is, well, I have this bathroom remodel and my design's just mediocre because, you know, I'm saving all my good designs for when I do my big project. And I think to myself, this is your big project. The best project you have is the one that's right in front of you. So that's the, your opportunity to shine. So if you have a bathroom, you kick that bathroom's ass, right? Mm. And you make that your architectural digest cover bathroom because that will get you the next job and the next job and the next job. But if you're doing mediocre design because you're waiting for that big budget or that big client, well, who's going to hire somebody who does mediocre design? Mm. So you take that budget that you have and you work it and you do your best work and then that will show and that will grow and grow and grow. Great advice. Great advice. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. So I cannot wait uh, to see the collection, right? So again, as I'm saying to all of you, you can go right now to jpoorliving.com or katelester.com and you can see it, but yes. I am waiting to see it. And um, I'm just so happy for you that it's such a great collaboration between yourself and Jay Poor. It doesn't surprise me one bit. Every single person I've ever interacted with Jay Poor is just such quality, kind, you know, brilliant people, inspirational people. And and that's really the truth of, of my experience with Jay Poor. And um, is there anything that you want to say? Well, they have a love and a knowledge of rugs that is just so deep. And, you know, the, the family is incredible. And I just think they really do care about the craft. And I think that's something that's becoming more and more rare to find these days, you know, and, and I think that's important. And there's a, there's sort of an honoring the craft that, that that's the culture at the mm -hmm. company and it runs through and it runs from top to bottom. And I love that. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, it's so wonderful to be able to be partnered with, with a company that really has an integrity to their brand and everything that they are, that they create. And so, yes, I think, um, you have to check out the collection. It's yes. Like you said, jperliving.com, katelesterhome.com. And I hope that, you know, it's as wonderful to everyone out there that's as meaningful as it is to me. I love it. I love it. Thank you so much, Kate, for joining me today. It was such fun to get to know you. Um, so fun. Yeah, really great, great advice. Great, great bossy personality popped out that way. <laughs> Yay, you. <laughs> Thank you, Luann, for having me. It's no surprise to me that this partnership between Kate and Jay Poor Living has been seamless, effective, and strong. Every interaction I've ever had with Jay Poor has been the exact same way. I have long admired their processes, their quality, and their ability to bring beautiful pieces to the forefront, pieces that you can specify for your projects. And the Harmon Collection is no exception. And I also love the way that when Kate ta speaks about the work that she has done with Jay Poor, you can tell that she's thrown her passion into this project, right? And the truth is that while plenty of clients are out there who are willing to purchase the actual one-of-a-kind vintage rugs, for many others, it's just not practical, right? And while interior design is a luxury and not necessarily accessible to every person, we're also in a time where more people than ever are making an investment into their homes. But kids, pet, and lifestyle may keep the extravagant vintage pieces off the table for some. And this is a great answer to that. I love that Kate saw the gap in the marketplace in this way and decided to fill it. How great is it that you can bring these beautiful rugs to your clients who might also be worried about juice spills or dog fur or mud from soccer cleats, right? I also loved hearing Kate talk about her inspiration. She said that she wanted this collection to be a tribute to the rugs that have stolen her heart. You can see that she truly admires and is interested and has researched and lives this, right? She has poured herself into her travels, her designer's eye, and her appreciation for unique vintage pieces all into this particular project of hers. It's clear, too, that Kate is a savvy business owner, one who understands the value of processes and the value of charging what you're worth.
And I want to remind you of what she said. She said, stay strong, stay true to your structure and your process. Slam dunk, Kate, you're speaking my love language, (laughs) okay? So when you first start out in business, it's hard, and therefore it can be easy to hedge on your rates, easy to take on clients you don't want to work with, and easy to say yes to the kind of projects that you don't really want to do. And I know sometimes in the beginning, this is necessary. We've all done it. We've all been there when you're building the business. But the more you can learn, the more experience you gain, and the more you refine your processes, and the more you commit to what you do best and knowing it and hearing that voice in you that tells you this is your lane, the more you can stay strong and true to your ideals, as Kate suggests. The thing is, you can only keep ignoring your inner voice for so long. And the sooner you lean into that voice and stop compromising, the better you'll be. I'm glad that Kate was able to share her business insights with us, as well as talking about the Harmon Collection. Take a look at these pieces. I'm sure you will be impressed and pleased at the design possibilities that you have with them. And let the Harmon Collection serve as a reminder that you can blend ideas, not just as you create designs, but in partnerships, collaborations, and interactions in the industry. I urge you to go to jpoorliving.com forward slash Luann to get started today with opening your trade account. I also highly encourage you and urge you to listen to the other two episodes featuring J Poor Living. You will not be disappointed. In fact, I'm 100% sure that you will come away from both of these episodes inspired to improve your business, inspired to ask yourself, am I living my values in my business? I know that you're going to start to ask yourself these questions after you listen to these episodes. All right. I'll put the links in the show notes so that you could just click on them and go right on to those episodes next. Thank you so much, Kate, for joining me. And thank you, Jay Poor Living, for sponsoring this podcast, for introducing me to Kate, and for being the fabulous collaborative partner that you are. Thanks tons to you, too, for joining me today. Decide to be excellent. Thank you for joining me today. This podcast is a production of Luann Nigara Inc. If you want to know more about me, my books, or Luann University, go to luannnigara.com. And if you are interested in having Window Works help you with your next window treatment or awning project in the New York, New Jersey metro area, go to windowworksnj.com to learn more. Have an excellent day.